Okay, video seven, we're going to take a look at creating and saving stencils. And what a stencil itself actually is, it's going to be a place inside of Visio where you can go and store a component that you have created, a good one. And then you can, every time that you open Visio, you can grab that. You don't have to go back to the same drawing. You just grab that as a component. You can drag it onto the page once, twice, a hundred million times, as many times or in whichever diagrams as you want. There are basic stencils that already exist inside of Visio. We're going to create some of our own stencils now where we're going to start to be able to classify our shapes. And I do suggest that you start organized and stay organized. I started like all over the map. And as a result, you know, you end up having to spend time then later on going back through and culling and sorting and being like, where did I put that stupid piece and stuff like that? It's just frustrating. So let's not do that. You learn from my mistakes and we're gonna go and create proper stencils in the proper order. Let's open up Visio. Over here we have got Visio. We got as far as creating all of these lines. We did a bunch of formatting uh, earlier. And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and create a stencil where we could save components into. And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go and save in one of these screws. Okay, I'm just gonna actually delete all of these ones here. I only want one here right now. Um, and we're going to take this one, we're going to save it as a stencil, then we're going to take it back out and then we'll show how it goes on to the sheets. Okay, over here on the left hand side, you should have a shapes menu. If you click on the more shapes, you then can go over here to a my shapes. Now, my my shapes is going to be way different than yours because mine has got tons and tons of components inside of it. Stuff for alarms, I've got a lot of blocks that are, you know, connectors, wire, uh, cable ends, and things like that, switches and panels. I've got stuff for box and pipes. I've got, you know, pictorial breadboard electronics. I've got a lot of connectable components, circuit breakers, lighting morettes, residential loads, screws and lugs, wires and boxes. I've got whole pile of lab volt machines because we use that in the lab. I've got line diagrams that I use, you know, once again, based around what uh, kind of components we have. I've got a bunch of motor control components, Schneider, you know, Siemens, VFDs that are in there. And I've got a load of motors as well. Stencils allow us to go and say, hey, I'm going to make a drawing. And when I do so, I want to be able to go and use, you know, let's say it's a motor. And let's say it is a contactor that we need. And maybe uh, we'll just go and grab a push button as well. So I had a drawing that needed to have a push button, a motor, and a uh, contactor. I'd then be able to go into here, grab what I need out of here. We'll just grab a single face uh, motor over there. It's a split face, single face motor. I'll go into my Schneider one over here. I'm going to go and grab myself a contactor. So now I've got a contactor that's inside of there. I'll just move this screw out of the way right now. And then I've got my push button. So I want to go and create a stop start station with, you know, some push buttons. I can add these in there. Hey, maybe I want to stick in a three position selector switch, or maybe I want to stick in a potentiometer off of it as well. You know, all of these now are going to be in my drawing, I'll be able to go and use my connectors, I'll be able to do my line formatting to go and connect all of these things together because they're active components that I saved with all those connectable points that are going to be off of there, right? You see how you can connect stuff in and, you know, drag stuff around. We're not here to do that right now. This is just why we want to save my stencils so that I don't need to have a drawing that's open that I modify instead. Anytime that I'm creating anything with a motor, all I have to do is open up my motor stencil and then select out of there. Do I want a 12 lead, nine lead, six lead, split phase? Do I want to have a pictorial cutaway, one line diagram, etc.? All right, I'm going to go and delete all of these right now because we don't need those. And I'll delete all of these over here. Don't need those. And we're back to just this screw over here. And I do have a whole stencil dedicated to screws and lugs because guess what? You're going to use this screw on so many different components that you're going to build. Later on, if you stick around all the way to the contactors, we will build a contactor. We will use this screw that we have, or maybe you'll have a better looking one by then as well. All right, back to here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn off the ones that I have open right now. So I'll just turn that off, that off, and that off so they're not confusing. We're back to where we were. I hit the more shapes. I go to my shapes, and then I go down here to new stencil. I'm going to select a metric one. Honestly, it doesn't really make much of a difference which one you pick. We're in a metric drawing because I always do my drawings in metric. So I'm going to pick a metric one. And what it does is it now creates this new stencil. You'll notice a little asterisk next to it, meaning that, hey, it's something out here, but there's nothing worth saving in here. It's just noting that there's been some changes. 
what I can do now is I can grab my component. So this was that screw that in the previous videos we created and then put those connection points onto. I can now drag that thing into here. You see, I haven't released it yet. I'm still holding onto it with my mouse button, but I can drag it over to here. And then when I release it in here, boom, does one thing that's really scary, disappears off of here. There goes your hard work, but it shows up inside of here. My stencil now shows that, hey, I can go and save this thing. And it also tells me that this is gonna be master one or master two or whatever it's going to go and be, depending on how many components you've made. I'm gonna double click this one. And I'm just gonna go and call this thing uh, screw head. I suggest you label them well, because as you get more and more in there, these will automatically become smaller. So it's harder to read, so make something that's readable. Once I have it inside of here, I can then go and hit save on the stencil. So when I hit save on that stencil, it's gonna automatically open up my shapes. My shapes are gonna be inside of your documents. So here's my root, you know, my name, my documents, my shapes as I go inside of here. My shapes is where it default saves to. I'm going to now save that stencil. I would suggest that you save that stencil as connectables, screws, and lugs, like what I have mine written over there. I'm just gonna go and give this thing a different name because I don't want it to overwrite my good one, but I'm going to go and call it one, Connectables, I call them connectables if it's components that I'm gonna to stick together. And then I'm gonna call that thing screws and lugs. By labeling everything connectables, or what you see up top in there, it keeps them all together so it's easy for me to go and find them. And that's good enough, we hit save. And at this point, this is now saved. And what I can do now is I can drag as many screw heads as I want onto this page, it's beautiful. I can take them, we'll do that quick alignment there, align the middle and we'll distribute them horizontally. Now we got them evenly balanced. And because we have already created all those connection points, we saved it with those connection points, which means that now I have got multiple components that I'm going to be able to just run connection points from one to the next, etc. All right, that's it. As long as you see this asterisk, it means that it has been you know, used uh, and then it's ready to go. So if I exit my program over here, it's gonna be fine. If I would make any changes to this, then it is going to go and ask me to go and change that. So let's say that I'm working on this. I've got my stencil open over here and I try to drag another screw head back in here. It's gonna allow me in this case because the stencil is still open. I'm gonna go and call this one two. We'll delete that one after. I'm gonna hit save over here and then I'm just gonna right click and turn off that edit stencil so it looks like a normal stencil. Normally when I open a stencil, it doesn't have that little asterisk over there. So if I have a stencil that doesn't have the asterisk but I wanna add something to it, I can do it to my own stencils. I can drag this over here I'm gonna try and add one again. And it says, this stencil is open read only. Would you like to edit the stencil so this operation can be completed? I'm gonna say yes because I wanted to do that. So I'm gonna say yes that's then going to allow me to have dragged into this one. And at that point, I could go and call this thing, you know, number three, call it good like that. I'd be able to go and hit save. It's in edit mode now. That's why we've got that asterisk up there. Try it with yours. I do suggest that you have not uh, only one that is gonna be brass, but that you also take one and then take this section, this section. So if I take this, I'm just, drill down to I've only got that section. I'm gonna to go to a light green off there. I suggest creating a bond screw. Just, and they're super handy to be able to just throw those things into any sort of a box that you're working on like that. Now you've got a nice green bond screw and it's way easier just to grab one and drag one in than it is when you're in the middle of something to have to go and you know change them around. If you are in edit mode, you can also delete components that you don't want. So I'm just gonna call that one bond over there and hit save, and now I have got a saved stencil.